Hello, my name is Taylor Nella and I'm going to be your MC for this evening's event. I'd just like to let you know that this session is being recorded, so never fear if you miss a piece of information, you can have a look back at the recording when you're sent it. So welcome, welcome to Curtin University's Student Year 12 and Parent Information Evening. Before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional land on which we meet, the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. This event is going to be hosted by Laura Andre, who is the Future Student Engagement Coordinator here at Curtin University, and we're also very lucky to be joined by some current students who are studying at Curtin too. Now, I know you're probably going to have a lot of questions during this session, so there's a feature on your screen that's going to help you do this. It's called the Q&A feature, and it's located on the right-hand side of your screen. When you send a question through, please make sure it's going to one of our panellists using the drop-down icon. We are going to endeavour to answer as many as we can, and Laura will endeavour to answer some at the end too. However, if we don't get to all of them, never fear, we will be staying online at the end. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Laura, and she's going to take you through to this evening's session. Over to you. Thanks, Taylor. And thanks to our amazing events team at Curtin University and our chats team that are live from the Bentley campus for helping us out with this session today. Normally when I'm on the road talking to high school students, I get asked a lot of questions. Uh, and what I've done tonight is I've pulled together all those key critical questions that I normally get asked by year 12 students and also parents. And I'm going to cover all that information tonight. So we're going to talk about the entry pathways, how to apply through TISC, all of our courses, scholarships and accommodation. And then as Taylor mentioned, we'll have a chat to three current students and then have time for 10 minutes of questions at the end. A couple of exciting fast facts about Curtin University. We are ranked number one for graduate employment out of WA public universities. We are also ranked ninth out of all Australian universities and in the top 1% of universities worldwide. Let's first talk about entry pathways. Entry pathways, this information and how to apply to TISC, I put that at the beginning because that's probably the most important. So let's get straight into it. All of these boxes highlighted in, I'm going to say a yellowy gold uh, or a mustard perhaps. These are the pathways that you can take to come to Curtin University. I'm not going to spend as much time talking about the International Baccalaureate, the IB, um, but if that is your uh, case, that if you are on that pathway, you can find more information about the IB on our Pathways page of our website. Let's start with ATAR. ATAR stands for Australian Tertiary Admissions Rank. And these are the things that you would need to achieve to uh, have your ATAR score at the end of the year. So you will need to achieve your WACE, which stands for Western Australian Certificate of Education. You will have um, an ATAR score, which is actually a ranking at the end of the year. Some courses have prerequisites, and we'll talk about that later on uh, in the evening. And you also will need to pass your English ATAR, ATAR English Literature, uh, ATAR English as an additional language or dialect. So that's the ATAR pathway. Some Year 12s will be studying a Certificate 4, and if you are, that's fantastic. You can use a Certificate 4 to apply for entry into a Bachelor degree. You do also need to meet English competency separate to that Certificate 4, and that is either by passing your ATAR English or um, passing your ATAR English, or you can uh, sit the STAT written English test. Another pathway that we have, which might be appropriate for someone, for example, that is doing a, a general pathway, so not doing ATAR, not doing a certificate for, uh, you could consider doing a diploma at Curtin College or a AQF provider. And that diploma, if you go through the Curtin College pathway, for example, uh, can take you straight into the second year of a bachelor degree. For our students that are uh, in general students, um, sorry about that, for our general students uh, or for our ATAR students that are concerned that they are going to be a near miss uh, to receive the ATAR that they need, we do have a uni ready enabling course and also Indigenous enabling programs as well. The uni ready and Indigenous enabling programs bridge the gap between year 12 and coming to uh, university. 
And that course will essentially meet the requirements for you to apply into a range of degree courses with us. The last pathway that I wanted to mention is the portfolio pathway, which is available for students that are uh, studying general subjects, or you could be studying, for example, one ATAR and a few uh, general subjects. Uh, and the portfolio pathway is available just for select courses in the areas listed on the screen. You can find more information about what to actually include in your portfolio uh, on the pathways page of our website. So they are essentially all the pathways, and you will probably know by now, um, being in year 12, which pathway is suitable for you. If you're not sure, uh, please feel free to get in contact with us after the session and we can direct you uh, to the right um, pathway. And as I mentioned, these are all the path this is all the pathway information that you can view on our website. We do recognise that sometimes things go a little bit hairy in year 12, um, so we have something called special consideration. So let's say, for example, if you had a... Um, a medical condition or perhaps a bereavement, something of that nature, you can actually submit an application for special consideration directly to our admissions team. And that means that they will assess that alongside your results at the end of year 12 and consider that in your application. When it comes to applying to Curtin University, you actually do all your applications go through TISC, so the TISC website. TISC stands for the Tertiary Institutions Service Centre, and this is the processing centre that Curtin uses to process all of our applications. Okay, uh, There will be TISC booklets coming out to Year 12s, I believe, sometime soon. They haven't come out just yet, but that's okay because all of the information that you need to apply is already up on the TISC website anyway. When you jump on the TISC website, there are a couple of key uh, areas to look at. So I've highlighted the resource square in the top right-hand corner. If you click onto that and click download, that give, will give you, take you to instructions on how to um, submit your application online. And one of those documents that you will be able to open up is this one here. And this document shows students how to log into the uh, TISC system, put in their user ID information, and commence their application. When you start uh, log into TISC and start your application, at the beginning there might be a couple of uh, personal questions that you need to fill out. And then after this, you will get to a point where you have to fill out uh, the courses that you are interested in applying for. So this part's really important. Basically, all you need to know, and the way to list your preferences, is in order of what you want the most. So you need to be listing your preferences from one to six, with one being the course you want the most at the university you want to go to the most. So you don't have to fill out all six slots, but we would recommend that you fill out at least two or three, um, just so that you can keep all, your, all of your options open. I've put a few examples up on the screen here. So let's say, for example, that I'm an ATAR student and my number one preference is to get into engineering. So I would put engineering as my first preference. And then I'm not, I want to have a backup option just in case I don't get in, entry into engineering. So I've put the multidisciplinary science degree as a second preference. And then I'm also interested in commerce, so I've put that third. And then ensuring that our enabling program is the fourth um, or last preference, just so I can fall back onto that in case I don't get the ATAR that I need. The second example is for students that might be submitting a portfolio, okay? So I may be wanting to get into the multidisciplinary science course, so I put that uh, portfolio entry course as my first preference, and then the uni-ready course as a second um, preference to fall back on. And then if I'm a Certificate 4 um, student, another example, if I'm wanting to get into the Bachelor of Arts Theatre Arts program, I can put that as my first preference, with the second preference being that Creative Arts Theatre Arts Portfolio uh, preference, and then enabling again. So just to summarise, the, the main thing you need to know here is to put your first preference as the course you want the most at the university that you want to go to, and to always ensure that you have an enabling program at the bottom so that you can always fall back on that. If you don't put that enabling program on there, then we won't send an offer to you if it falls back onto that preference because we don't think that you're interested in that course. So it's quite crucial to make sure that you have that preference on there. If you are on the ATAR pathway and your school has already given you a predicted ATAR form, 
When you go to the last step of the TISC application process, that is where you will upload your predicted ATAR document. If your school hasn't given you one, that's fine. You can just skip that step. And for anyone that isn't an ATAR student, you can also uh, skip that step, sorry. So just to reiterate, uh, only if you're an ATAR student and only if you have a predicted ATAR, then uh, you, will, you can upload it at that step at the end. It has been a difficult year this year for everyone, not just our year 12s, um, but with a lot of things happening at this year. And so we are reimbursing the TISC application fee. So if you apply to TISC before the 1st of October, with Curtin as your first preference, uh, and if you receive and accept an offer from us, we will refund your application fee. Course switching is something to be considering if you, for two reasons. One could be that you don't meet the prerequisites to go into a certain course, or another reason could be that you want to have a backup plan in case you don't get the ATAR you need for that higher entry course. So the courses you will see on the left-hand side of the screen are some of our more competitive courses, which means that we only take a certain number of students into those courses. So what we would suggest as a second preference, not that you have to abide by this, but is considering a backup plan. So for example, let's say I'm really wanting, uh, and we can use the example that I used before on the previous slide for engineering. If I'm really wanting to get into engineering and I have that as my first preference, uh, I may consider having multidisciplinary science as a second preference, just as a backup. Engineering has an ATAR of 80. If I get an ATAR of 75, would I get an, uh, an offer into engineering? I wouldn't because it requires an 80. But if I have an ATAR of 75, you can see multidisciplinary science requires an ATAR of 70. So if I have that as my second preference, I may get an offer for multidisciplinary science and then I can apply to course switch into engineering later on. Please note that you don't necessarily have to abide by these courses we've put up on the screen. These are just some suggestions. In the case of some of the health science courses, and if you're interested in occupational therapy, for example, there might be other health science courses that you're interested in putting in as a second preference. For example, in the case of occupational therapy, you might also be interested in putting as a second preference exercise and sports science. So all that information, although it sounds very heavy, um, year 12 is all you really need to know at this point in time is that you can apply now. So we have already opened up TISC and we are receiving applications. And it's a really simple three-step process. So the first step is to go into TISC and submit your application. The second step is that you will receive a personalized email from our admissions team, and that will produce step three, an outcome will be one of three things. So our admissions team will write back to you and they'll either come back with A, uh, they'll give you a conditional offer with you giving you the, op um, the option to accept, or B, they may say thank you for your application, uh, but you've ap applied for a competitive course. So we just need to wait until we receive your results at the end of the year uh, before we can send out any offers. And the third option C that you might receive from our admissions team is to send in a portfolio. And if that is requested, our admissions team will send you all the links and information in regards to what to submit. Now we're going to go through some of the study areas. So all of the study areas that we have fall under these five uh, clusters. So we have health science, business and law, science and engineering, humanities, and the Centre for Aboriginal Studies also known as CAS. CAS has bachelor degree and enabling programs, and it has some extra cultural support involved in the courses. If you want to learn more about the courses available through CAS, just jump onto the website and you can contact the team there. Let's start by looking at health science. So I've clustered these into four different areas for you. The top ones are more of your clinical type courses. The second box down, you're looking at uh, courses around promoting healthy lifestyles and healthy living, healthy eating. Your third box down looks at more of your laboratory-based uh, type courses like genetics and biotechnology. And we do also have a medicine program. If you are interested in medicine, you need to be down, have, uh, you need to download, sorry, the medicine admissions guide on our website and ensure, and please ensure that you have also booked the UCAT test for medicine. You can see on the screen here a couple of examples of some of the technology that we use to teach our students. So you can see that it is 
uh, of the standard of what is used in industry so that our students, as soon as they go into the workforce, they're using that same technology. Business and law also, you can see lots of screens and computers on here. So we have our um, practice moot court in the top left hand corner, um, our trading room, uh, our social media studio, uh, um, agency, the agency, sorry, and the bottom right hand corner just opened this year uh, is management headquarters. So some fantastic equipment in there, um, those spaces that you can use. There are a huge range of courses across um, the Bachelor of Commerce and the Bachelor of Business Administration. Both of those degrees offer a slightly different structure, but both give you the opportunity to specialise in different areas. So I would encourage you to jump on the website and look at both courses to see which suits you more. The Bachelor of Business Administration does have a little bit more of a management focus in some of its core units. So at the top, we've got some courses that would suit people, uh, potentially that like uh, talking, like working with people. Uh, the second box down is for more of our pe uh, people that are more analytical or maybe good at maths. Then the third box down is for people that are really organised uh, or, or like maybe organising, if you're someone that at school that's organising um, activities with your friends on the weekend, maybe management would suit you. Then we've got creative courses, and the final box is a bit of a mixture of everything. Then we come to law. So law uh, is quite unique, um, our undergraduate degree in Western Australia, and that's because we can offer it, we do offer it in three years via trimesters. Uh, and this course is taught from the Perth Central Business District from the second year onwards. And there are several options to uh, package a second degree, so a double degree with law, uh, and you can see the different ones on the screen. Not that you have to do a double degree. There are also double degrees in a variety of other areas outside of law as well, which you can explore on our website. Humanities is huge. Uh, so we've got courses in the creative fields, uh, education and also the built environment. So you can see teaching up here, design, uh, all of our applied sciences and construction management got all of our languages and cultural studies. Um, creative arts has recently been restructured in that um, with the, if you decide, for example, to go into fine art, you're actually immersed and also work alongside screen art and theatre art students as well, because that's what industry is demanding at the moment. Bachelor of Communications, also quite an interesting degree where you can um, put in a, a few different streams of study. And the great thing about the humanities courses is that most of them don't have prerequisites and a lot of them have a guaranteed ATAR of 70, which, which means they aren't as competitive as some of those other sort of health science and a few sciences that we were looking at before. These are some graduates that have come out of the uh, humanities area. So you may recognise Carrie Bickmore from the project here. And then we move on to science and engineering. So we've got all of our environmental courses for people that like working outside at the top. Um, we've got mining. I'd also really like to highlight the third box down because you might notice how many people are having to rely on technology at the moment. So I think this is going to be a really strong area in terms of job demand for the future. So things like data science, computer systems and networking. Um, and then we've got some... Um, various other courses. Last one I wanted to mention on this, on this science area is advanced science. So year 12s, if you are interested in doing a fourth year of research as part of your degree, the advanced science degree actually uh, incorporates that fourth year in the course already so that you don't have to apply for it separately after your three year bachelor degree. It's already embedded and you will learn a little bit about research from the beginning of your course. Engineering has a common year in the first year and then you specialise from the second year onwards. It does have some prerequisites, so you need to have mathematics, uh, math methods and at least one of the three sciences listed on the screen. Some of our science courses and health science courses also have prerequisites and you can check on our website uh, in the course information as to whether or not your course does have a prerequisite. If you are concerned that you... Um, have not met the prerequisites for a particular course and you're not sure which course to apply for, just get in contact with our team and we can help you. But the slide that I put up earlier and that we will provide again in the recording that gets sent out to you, uh, you can watch this again and refer to that slide to look at um, some alternatives to pick up any prerequisites that you haven't met. 
Curtin has a wide range of partnerships with industry and one of my personal favourites is with NASA. And my favourite story um, that I've heard, because uh, every year what we do is we send two students on an internship, and my favourite one is of uh, two students, uh, they were from Mechatronics, and they had the opportunity to prototype a small robot about the size of a mobile phone that could potentially be used on missions to Mars. And if you want to learn more about their story or any other stories from any other Curtin graduates, please jump onto the Curtin YouTube channel and you can learn a little bit more about different courses and also learn more about uh, what Curtin's graduates are now doing. Now we're going to talk about scholarships and accommodation and then we will have our current students coming up very soon. There are a range of scholarships available for different categories. So they may be merit-based, they may be related to financial need or relocation, uh, they could be subject specific, uh, or they could be special category. So for example, sometimes there's scholarships available to women that are going into the area of science, technology, engineering and maths. The best thing to do at the moment is to jump on the scholarships webpage and run a filtered search to check which scholarships you're eligible to apply for. So when you go onto that page, you can put in a bit of your information. So you can say, for example, um, that you're an Australian citizen, that you're a school leaver, that you're interested in going into health sciences, for example, and it will actually filter the scholarships and show you what you might be eligible to apply for. Some of the scholarships may be available to apply for now, but I believe most of them are opening from the 16th of August, uh, and that's when you can start submitting those applications. My personal favourite scholarship, because it doesn't require any extra work, is the Curtin Excellence Scholarship. So when you're applying through TISC and you have Curtin as your first preference, if you receive an ATAR of 96 or above, you will automatically receive this scholarship, okay? And it's between five and $15,000. So just to reiterate, so long as you have Curtin as your first preference on your TISC application, and if you do receive at the end of year 12 an ATAR of 96 or higher, you will automatically receive this scholarship. I think it's important to talk a little bit about fees as well. So you can look up the fees on the Curtin uh, website and you can go to the Study Assist website to find out information about the Hex Help Government Assistant Loans. Just to explain it brief briefly, the way it works is if you're an Australian citizen or a permanent resident, you'll be eligible for what's called a Commonwealth Supported Place, which means that the government will pay for a portion of your fees and then the rest of it is what you are paying. If you are an Australian citizen, you're also eligible for what's called the HEX help loan, which means you can defer the payment of your fees till later on after you've graduated. If you're a permanent resident, you don't have access to the HEX help loan, but you only have to pay each semester upfront. You don't have to pay the full three-year degree. And likewise for international students, again, you don't have access to HEX, but you can pay each semester as you go. There is also a uh, student services fee um, if you decide to park on campus. Obviously, there, there's fees around that. We do have a brand new bus port on campus, which is the second largest bus per port in Perth. Uh, textbooks as well. Um, and if you are studying a science, maybe engineering or health science course, there could be fees associated with lab coats, name badges and things like that. For any students that are streaming in from regional WA or if you are a boarder in Metro WA at the moment, there is on-campus accommodation. And it's great because it means you can just roll out of bed and walk straight into class. And Uni Lodge have asked me today just to mention to all of you that they have a fantastic uh, promotion on at the moment where if you apply before the 3rd of August for accommodation for next year, you can receive it at this year's rate. So that's before the 3rd of August that you need to get in to take up that offer. In your first two weeks of, uh, well, before you actually start at Curtin University, there's two weeks of orientation, and that's where you can learn a lot more about the support that we offer, but it's good to just know, uh, to know beforehand what is available. So there is academic support. If you need any help, maybe um, writing essays or doing referencing, there's counselling and health services. If you're looking for a part-time job or if you're interested in volunteering, you can have a chat to our careers team. And there is also a really uh, large online community and lots of online resources available to all of our students. 
I recognize and respect that this has been a lot of information in a very short period of time and year 12s and mums and dads and guardians, you've been doing great, so thank you for staying tuned. Uh, this website here my team has put together for year 10s, 11s and 12s and parents. It's basically everything you need in one place on one page, so I'd, I'd encourage you while you're listening now to jump into a new browser and bring this page up. It's filled with videos, how-to guides, undergraduate guides, links to fees and scholarships, everything you need in the one place. A couple of uh, a couple more fun facts just to finish off my section. Uh, we are, as I mentioned before, number one for graduate employment out of WA Public Universities. And our graduate salary uh, has a, um, our graduates earn a median salary, sorry, of 62,600. And we almost have 70% of Curtin graduates that are employed full-time, four months after completing their course, which I think is, is fantastic. And what we're going to do now is invite some of our current students to have a chat to us about their experience and how they're enjoying their time with us. First up, we have Connor. Hello, Laura. How are you going? Good, thanks, Connor. How are you? I'm good. Excellent. And what are you studying at the moment? So I study urban and regional planning, so that's under the Faculty of Humanities. And pretty much it's like a combination of dealing with people, dealing with cities, and dealing with everything that you can think of in, I guess, society. And it's kind of like the Sims in Sim City. So, you know, it's a lot of fun. Very cool. Um, and so, Connor, when I'm talking to students, uh, sometimes at schools and over the phone, sometimes they struggle a little bit deciding what it is they want to study. So how did you make the decision um, of deciding what it was that you wanted to study? Well, it was a combination of different things. I think, um, firstly, I study things in school that I was passionate about. So like I said, my interests personally are the world and people and how we all, I guess, live together in society. So I did geography. And then my one of my teachers recommended um, urban planning at Curtin. So I looked into that and I found out about Curtin Open Day, So, which I believe now is online. Yes, so we have a virtual open day, uh, and that's going to be happening on the 13th of September. Cool. So with um, Curtin Open Day, I had the privilege to go on campus, go to the architecture building and speak to um, human, I mean, urban planning lecturers and students and have that face-to-face -face kind of conversation and learn about what the course offers and the type of projects the students do. It's really good. Amazing. Uh, and then another thing I wanted to ask you, what entry pathway did you take to come to Curtin? So I did um, the ATAR entry pathway. So for humanities, that was the 70 ATAR. So I remember when I, you know, the day of getting your TISC email, I remember waking up and waiting for that email. I got an ATAR Bribe 70, so that was pretty cool. So I put down uh, urban and regional planning on my preference, and that was my entry. Pretty easy, you know, from doing ATAR courses in high school, but again, it's always different for people. So for example, my sister, she studied um, fine art, and she didn't get the ATAR that she wanted, so instead she did portfolio entry. So she showed all the artwork she did throughout high school, and that's how she started doing fine art at Curtin. But then I have friends who did architecture and they did uni ready. So all these different pathways really for, in my case, the humanities courses that it's pretty easy, I guess, to get into courses at Curtin. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Connor. And I think that's a good thing to mention is that whatever your situation is, whatever pathway you're on year 12, there's always going to be a pathway available to you at Curtin. Thanks very much, Connor. No worries. Catch you, Laura. Thank you. And now we've got Eddie. How are you going, Eddie? I'm great, thanks. Thanks for taking your time out tonight to speak with us. Um, what are you studying? I'm studying finance and information systems. Okay. So that's a Bachelor of Commerce um, in the Faculty of Business and Law. And I chose fun. I chose those two majors because I was interested in finance and I see a you know a future of work in IT or information systems and I thought they'd be a good mix. Amazing. Um, and what activities? I ask get asked this question a lot. What activities are available on campus, or what sort of things do you do in your spare time? Campus is always busy. So um, there's over 130 different clubs. You've got everything from accounting to Harry Potter. Um, you've also got volunteering, so um, and you can get curtain um, curtain extra credits, which um, go on your certificate, and that uh, help you impress you know your employers. So uh, you've also got uh, workshops, library workshops. So they um, that this happens every week, and um, they run workshops on you know how to network or how to build your LinkedIn or even how to study properly. Um, so they're, they're really handy. 
And then um, I guess a really popular one is the makerspace area in, in the library, which is a, a, an area designated by Curtin where they provide loads of resources and, um, you know, everything from VR to robotics to arts and crafts where people take time between classes just to go and be creative. So that's a really good point, I guess. Um, but Curtin also have a lot of industry um, contacts on and off campus all the time. So there's always something going on. The makerspace sounds, space sounds really exciting. I haven't checked that out myself. I think I need to see that one. Um, and another question I get asked quite frequently is uh, how you, whether you have time to have a part-time job, and if you do, how you manage work with study and your, and your just your timetable overall. Yeah, I think um, it's um, very popular for students to have a part-time um, a part-time job while they're at uni. Um, you'll find that the the timetables are really um, quite flexible, especially before consensus day. Now that's different for different faculties, but for the Faculty of Business and Law, it's up to the first four weeks that you're able to change that, and that allows you to, um, you know, work in your work schedule or vice versa around your uni work, um, which is really, really handy. And I suppose uh, another one is that there's, it's competitive, but there's a lot of work to be, um, to be had on campus where um, you've got Earn While You Learn, where they employ students um, for all sorts of different work um, on campus, which which is great, especially for um, students who spend a lot of their time there. I, and I guess I suppose the last one is that, um, yes, you do, you have time for work, you have time for study, um, and there's, there's even time for playing. So like I said, either joining the clubs or sport teams. Um, so there's... It's, it's a really good lifestyle um, because you've got the gym on campus, everything you need is on campus. So when you go, it's just not to study, but it's to, you know, have a great time also. So. Yep. So would you say that for maybe an arts or commerce student, um, I think they would have about 12 to 15 hours per week um, and maybe one to, min, a minimum of one to one hour. So for every one hour that you are studying on campus, you probably need to allow at least another hour for self-study after that. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, for like an arts or commerce student as an example. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. At yeah. least, at least uh, I say at least one hour um, for every contact hour that you have yeah. is, is definitely a good guide. Yeah, okay. And then obviously for some of our students studying medicine, it's going to be a little bit more than that. Thank you very much, Eddie. No <laughs> and now we have lovely Christina looking very stylish today. Thank Love you. the outfit. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. And what are you studying at the moment? Um, I'm studying event management. Um, and I really love it. it. Like you said before, um, when you were describing the commerce degrees, it's a bit of everything. So I'm allowed to be creative. I'm also allowed to manage people, delegate roles, plan, be organized. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and would you say that it's easy to make friends at university? Uh, I would say yes. Someone who's socially awkward, if I can make friends, I think everyone can make friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also think the biggest tip to make friends is um, joining clubs and societies, like Eddie said. I also highly recommend um, doing a John Curtin weekend through Curtin Volunteers. So last year I was able to go on two different weekends away to Harvey and to Nungarin out in the wheat belt with a bunch of girls and a bunch of guys and we got to volunteer, go to a music festival, it was great. Um, so. And what's, what activities do you do when you're volunteering? Like, what do you? Uh, so it can be a range of things. So if, when we went to Harvey, we did river restorations. Um, and then we went, when we went to Nungarin, we did like a, on Friday night, we did like a catering dinner for the people that came in. Saturday night, we did a music festival. And then Sunday morning, we did a Sunday market slash sausage, sausage sizzle. Yeah. Yeah. And who doesn't like sausage sizzle? Um, and last question, do you have any current, uh, do you have any tips, sorry, for our year 12s that are listening in? I would highly recommend that um, you do the, like, the workshops that are on campus to learn not only your soft skills, but also your transferable skills. But I also, if you take away anything from this information session is that your grades in year 12 don't define your potential um, and your future career as well. Don't stress too much, just go with the flow and take the opportunities that come to you. I love it. Thank you, Christina. Thanks for your time today. <laughs> and now, uh, thanks to all our current students for taking um, the time out 
it's nice to be with us. Now we've got some uh, questions that have come through from the audience. So we're going to go through um, these questions. So thanks for sending these through. The first one we have, um, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, um, Thalzan, uh, when is the best time to apply through TISC, now or later? That's a really good question. And you can apply now, but you can also wait until the um, end of September. It's up to you. Uh, just note that if you do apply after the 1st of October, the TISC application fee actually increases quite significantly, so you'll be more out of pocket. So it's probably ideal to apply before the 1st of October, but applications have been, already been open for a few weeks now, so you're more than welcome to apply um, now if you wish to. Uh, the next question is from Anna. Thanks for sending this in, Anna. Uh, Anna says, I've applied on TISC yesterday, um, but only selected commerce. As my preference, is this um, is this a problem? No, that's that's totally okay. So what we can do is, if you've just put um, Anna Commerce down as your uh, course, then when you actually, if you receive an offer later on into the course and you accept that, uh, we can look at your major and specialisations later on. So if you've just selected Commerce, Anna, that's totally fine. Um, then we've got Ash. Um, what does conditional offer mean? That is a really good question. So a conditional offer uh, for Year 12s means that the offer is um, pending your results that come through at the end of the year. So if we give you a conditional offer, um, it means that we are giving you an offer on the condition that you meet the requirements, okay? And uh, all the information will come out from our admissions team in the personalised email that they send you after you've submitted your application. If you're still not sure after that, feel free to contact our team. Uh, will there be a virtual open day? I think we've covered that before. Um, but yes, there will be a virtual open day and it will be on the 13th of September. So uh, please save that date in your diary. Um, and then the next question is, when do I pick my majors? Which, similar to uh, what I was saying before, and until you actually, uh, we have your results at the end of the year, um, and you and the offers go out, and you um, accept your offer, and you get to the point of what we call enrolling in your units, that's when you can be uh, picking your majors. In saying that, um, when you are applying through TISC, some courses do have majors, and you can actually apply into those majors at this point, um, but some courses you, you may not have to and you may only select that later on, so into the next year, the beginning of next year. Uh, I think that's all the questions that we might go through for now, so I'm just going to pass you back to Taylor. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you, Laura. Um, that was so much wonderful information that I know all the Year 12 students and also the parents who have joined in today um, have taken in, believe it or not. I, wasn't, I was a Year 12 student not too long ago and going to one of these information sessions really helped clear some of the questions that I had. So I'd like to thank you, Laura, and our wonderful students who have joined us today, Connor, Christina and Edward. So to make an appointment to speak to one of our course advisors, please refer to the information on your screen. And with all those questions that are still buzzing around in your head or haven't been answered yet, our team will be staying online for a little bit longer to answer any questions that haven't been answered. And as I said at the beginning, if for any reason you need to leave early, please send us a private message using the chat function with your email and your question and we will endeavour to get back to you as soon as possible. So thank you for your time this evening. I hope you got a lot out of it and I hope you have a wonderful night. Thanks.